Hi guys, this is Angela. Welcome to my channel. If you don't know who I am, I'm a self-employed artist who focuses on travel illustrations and making art tutorial videos. Wix.com reached out to me after seeing some of my YouTube videos and kindly sponsored this video. So in this video, I want to talk you guys through how I built an artist portfolio website using Wix.com. If you haven't heard of Wix before, Wix is the online platform that allows you to easily create and manage your web presence. You can use it to build a portfolio for school or job application or a personal website to showcase all of your artwork as well as an online shop. And today I'll be focusing on how to build a portfolio website to increase your online presence as well as making it easier for you to reach out to potential clients. You can register by following the link below and get your website started while following along this video. Before we go into the technical aspect of website building, there are two steps that I would recommend to you guys. The first is inspiration. Finding the right inspiration can help you figure out what exactly you want for your website. So for me, I went through everyone I followed on Instagram, I clicked open all of their websites, and I selected out a few that had everything I wanted for my own website. So I knew I wanted a portfolio slash work page where I had all of my different projects listed out as galleries. I also wanted a very thorough about page so I can fully introduce myself to anyone who visits my website. And in addition to that, I wanted an info page where I can list out all the upcoming events and projects that I'll be working on. Lastly, and most importantly, I wanted a direct link in the menu to my online shop whether it is actually combining my online shop with Wix or linking it to my existing online shop. Because there are hundreds of templates available on Wix, having a clear vision can help you narrow down your choices and find the right one to work on top of. So the second step that I would recommend is getting organized. Get all of your scanned artwork as well as digital artwork into a folder called website or however you want to name it. Make sure you organize everything into individual folders that matches the page you have in mind for your website, as well as resizing all your files into a uniform resolution and naming them properly so you can always come back to it and not get confused. Being organized will save you so much time later on. Once you know how exactly you want your website to look like and all your files are organized, you are now ready to go. So I'm just going to switch over to screen recording when you create a new site on Wix, you will be faced with two options, using ADI, Artificial Design Intelligence, or using the Wix editor. The Wix editor will allow you full control on customization, which is the option that I'm going with today. Click on Art and Illustration, you will be able to see all the templates tailored for artists. Click View, View Full Demo, and you can see a template in action. If you like it, you can proceed to edit this site, or if you don't, you can come out and choose another one. I'm going to choose one with the gallery on the main page because I want to showcase my various projects. I'm just going to go ahead and edit this site. At first, you might be overwhelmed by the interface, but don't worry. On the left, we have menus and pages. This is where all of your pages will be. You can have your projects on sub pages, click down to a main page. Let's take a look at the sub page. You can have a gallery on here for the individual images. I'm going to unstretch the gallery as well as center the menu and drag the artist name to the top so it looks more prominent. Next, I'm going into theme manager to change the color theme. Click into change theme and you can choose a color palette that works for your website. You can also modify individual colors to your liking. Next, clicking into text, we can change the font for headings and paragraph. I'm changing the heading font to a very clean looking font called Lulo Clean and matching all the rest of the headings to this font. For the paragraph, I'm going with a font called Brandon Grotesque. Now that I've selected a font that I like, I'm going to play around with the font size as well as color for my website name as well as the menu. There are different menu styles that you can choose, I'm just sticking with the most basic one. You can also change the page background to an image or a flat color. I'm just changing it to a warm, nice color. Let's start modifying this gallery by deleting these existing images. Before I upload all of my media on site files, I'm creating individual folders for each project. And then uploading image files into its appropriate folder. 
Once all my files are ready, I'm going to go into add media image and select all the thumbnail photos that I prepared. On the right side, under title, I'm going to enter the name of each project. Now I'm going to adjust the spacing of my individual grids by going into settings and customize layout. Scroll down to adjust spacing to 30. That's just my personal preference. When you click into design, you will be able to see how it looks when your mouse hovers over the image. So I'm going to adjust the color to a nice warm color that I like. You can click on add color if you want to add an additional color to your existing palette. So I have that fading when the mouse hovers over. Moving on to the text, I'm going to size it down a bit. And now I'm going to center it on the image, changing it to white so it looks nice against my warm background color. So let's just preview this page for now. So this is how it looks. This is my front page. When the mouse hovers over, you can see the project name. I'm going to work on the footer, <laughs> such a weird word, and just adding my name as well as some social icon. I'm done setting up my work page. I'm going to add a new page renaming it to Frequently Asked Questions, another new page for um, About section. Here we have a store page that's included in the template for digital art. I don't intend on selling my digital files, so I'm just deleting it. And for my shop, I'm going to add a link to web address, adding in my online shop that's currently on a separate website. But I do intend to switch over to Wix changing the name of the link to shop. Let's work on the sub pages under work, which will represent my individual projects. I'm going to leave one sub page as reference and delete all of the existing sub pages. Just going to work on this sub page, changing the project title to my project 21 days in Japan. Just making sure all the font and description font looks nice before I move on to the gallery. So for the gallery, I'm clicking into Manage Media, deleting the existing images, and then adding media from all the files I've uploaded. Choosing all the files under this project, rearranging them in the order I want them to display. I'm going to just stretch this out a tiny bit so my images look a bit bigger on the page. Going into Settings, I'm going to adjust the spacing under Layout and then under design, I'm going to adjust how it looks when the mouse hovers over. So right now, there's a title displaying as well as the image zooming in. I'm going to get rid of all of that for this page. Under settings, you can decide what happens when someone clicks on the image. I'm going to leave it at open in expand view. This way, people can flip over through the images like looking through a book. I'm getting rid of the titles just so the images can be centered on expand view. So this sub page looks pretty good. The only thing that's missing right now is a button at the end that allows visitors to go back to the main work page. So now I'm duplicating the sub page to create new project pages. The next one is live in Vancouver. So same as before, just adding in the text description as well as the image gallery. I like how it looks right now, but I think the second and third images are too big. I'm going to settings, layout, customize layout, and I'm changing the thumbnail size so that they will be smaller. And for this page, I'm going to change the setting of when you click on the image to nothing happens because I don't want, I don't really need people to look at the bigger images. Duplicating this page to my next project, a trip to England. What's different for this page is I'm actually going to enter all the titles for the images because these locations are not that recognizable. I want people to know which town I'm drawing. I'm going to settings and then design to change the overlay effect. I'm changing the overlay to a much darker color as well as making it fade in when the mouse hovers over. I'm going to text and displaying title, changing the font to a smaller size and having it white so it pops against the darkened background. 
So previewing this page, when the mouse hovers over, you can see the location of my drawing. So the next few projects will be exactly the same as a trip to England page. I'm going to speed up the process and finish them up. Now that I've finished all of my sub pages, I want to link them together. So the previous and next buttons on the top of the page can actually link to the previous or the next project. So I'm clicking next and clicking on the link icon, changing it to an existing page. Just checking out in preview to see all the links are working. Right now the thumbnails on the work page doesn't link to anything. So I'm clicking to gallery setting and linking each image to its corresponding project page. So now when I click on a thumbnail, it goes into the project page. Let's move on to the next page, frequently asked questions. So I'm setting up a big font on the left side. And then on the right side, I'm going to add list and grid and choosing one that matches my need. I'm stretching this out so that there's enough space for my text. And I'm going to adjust the background color of each individual block to separate each questions. And then just adjusting the font size and the style as well as pasting in the actual questions and answers. So everything looks pretty good for this page in the preview. I'm going to move on to the next page, which is the about page by going to add strip and choosing an about strip that I like. I'm stretching this as well and adjusting the font to match my website font. Clicking to change column background, I can change it into my own picture. Here's a photo someone took of me two years ago. I still look very youthful. There's this white truck in the background that I don't like. I'm going to edit that out by going to image, crop and edit, and cutting out the background, replacing it with a flat color. So that looks pretty nice. Just going to play around with color and font size as well as typing in the text. And then I'm going to add another strip and changing that to my story because I want to go into greater detail for anyone who is curious what my journey is as an artist or as a person. And finally, I'm going to add in a contact me strip. The one I chose has a submission form on it, which could be useful. And just adjusting the font as well as the width and the color of this page. Under contact me, there are some social icons. You can adjust the social icons to a color that you like and then linking them to your social media links. This page looks pretty good. Moving on to the final page, info page. This page is a little bit repetitive. It's very similar to about page, but I wanted to have a separate page for all of my upcoming projects as well as events. For this page, I'm not doing that much adjustment. I'm just modifying what's already available on here. And it's kind of sad there isn't a lot of upcoming events. A lot of our events have been canceled due to COVID. Hopefully next year or the year after, everything will go back to normal. And I'll have a longer list of upcoming events here. So just going to preview and checking out how each individual page looks and whether or not there's more changes to be made. Before you publish your website, there's a really important step that I want to go over, which is viewing the mobile version of your website. The big difference between the mobile version and the desktop version is the menu. Instead of listing out the menu, there's a little menu icon. You can change that icon to whatever design you like. You can click into manage menu and then click on the font so you can change the regular font color as well as selective font color. You have to also reset the mouse hovering option on your gallery. For some reason, it's different on the mobile version. So I'm just trying to match what I had on the desktop version. You can click on A plus, A minus to adjust the font size so it works on your mobile version. One final check and once everything looks good, you can go ahead and publish your website. So there's one extra thing I want to show you guys. It's going to add apps and there's an option for you to add an online shop. It's called Wix Stores. 
So I only have one sample product on here. Once I finish, I will create a separate video going over how exactly I build my Wix online store, as well as sharing my experience of managing an online shop for the past three years and comparing Store Envy to platforms like Wix. If you're now motivated enough to build a website, don't forget to use the link below to register on Wix.com. So that's it for this video. Have fun building your website. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys can do. Feel free to link it in the comments as well. If this video was helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in my next video.